Clubhouse. Jill, ask them what they think about Supervillain. It sounds better to me. More exciting. Do you prefer saving America? How about saving the world? Nope. It's saving America. Welcome back to another episode of Podcast V. This is Pod Clubhouse's continuing coverage of The Boys. This is for episode four of season three. My name is Paul, and I'm with Kat. Hey, how are you? I'm up early, but not early as our friend Inez. How are you, Inez? <laughs> I am waking up, but I'm excited to be here. Thank you. <laughs> What's not so early here is very early there. What was this episode's title? Glorious Fire Year Plan. That sounds like a Russian translation. <laughs> Maybe it's Glorious Five Year Plan. My handwriting is awful. <laughs> glorious Five Year Plan. <laughs> that makes more sense. It does. I mean, Fire Year, that, that's exciting. Yes. <laughs> really get to the point. Oh. Did they mention anything about a five year plan in the show? In terms of like Homelander's plan, you know? That's what like I was what thinking. He wants to do. Yeah, because he's. Yeah, like in general, it seems like he's setting things up. It does. So it's just kind of making fun of like the five year plan that we usually, you know, put ourselves on and they make fun of everything. So that to me makes sense. But I don't know if I missed anything. It, the reason I bring up uh, R- Russia was that there was a lot of Russia in this one. And the the term glorious always seems to be <laughs> involved with with oppressive governments. And so like like uh, South Park, whenever they're making fun of North Korea, they refer to their glorious leader, you know. <laughs> You know, so when I think of uh, <laughs> roughly translated uh, language from countries um, that have more or less been deemed okay to poke fun at in in Hollywood, uh, the word "glorious" comes up when they, in terms of describing themselves or their own leadership or something like that. So, okay, so speaking of Russia, that's basically where one of the two big uh, plot lines from this episode takes place the boys head to Russia in search of the Homelander killer. I think we called it that they weren't going to find anything. And Kat specifically called that they would find a frozen in carbonite or or something. Um, Soldier boy. Yes. And I didn't watch ahead. So I feel good that that was my prediction. (laughs) Is there an applause (laughs) button that we can use here, Paul? Uh, I didn't set it up ahead of time, but I'll try to put it in Mm -hmm. after the fact. We should do like a signature ding for every prediction that like does get going. (laughs) It keeps... Yeah, you know what? It's just years of like TV watching that like I feel like that was pretty much like that was why I guessed that. (laughs) Yeah, culminated in a good call. Uh, Just uh, well, and then um, the situation with Kamiko is something that I think we we examined in terms of having members of the of the home team, the boys on um, the chopping block. And we, we thought they were talking too much about the future for Kamiko and they this episode left her fate pretty grim yeah and I believe that she was uh, mentioned as a potential on the chopping block yes so yeah too much too much looking at life afterwards yeah I didn't expect that I expected uh Frenchie to be put in harm's way because it was sort of that line where you're like ooh that's the end of you for this episode of French when he was like, we can go away and we'll be happy. And I was like, Oh no, it's going to be him. And then Kimiko is going to just go crazy, like, you know, and go against butcher, but it kind of went opposite of that. So I was, I was, I was like, okay, cool. I'm glad you didn't go the normal, like if they had taken out French, I think that would have been too easy since he's not souped up. So I like that they kind of did um, Kimiko, especially since earlier in the episode, she, has like in, I guess some sort of in, invincibility, but if something punctures her, then she's uh, possibly or given Soldier Boys like we don't really know his ability kind of went through her. So then it kind of set up a nice like oh she can't die, and then they kind of like well trick she actually can in some instances. So I like that. Like with other superheroes, we've seen some imperviousness to mundane things like bullets, but against each other's powers, they're much more susceptible. So. Like we mentioned in the last super sode, we, we didn't know Soldier Boy's powers. We were thinking he was a Captain America version, you know. But in this, he had a power a lot more like Marvel's um, Havoc. He was in a couple of the X-Men movies, but essentially he can shoot a beam of 
energy from kind of his chest area that blasts out. You might remember him from First Class and um, uh, Apocalypse, I think it was. I didn't expect to see that. I didn't expect to see a very destructive uh, blasting power from the guy. Uh, what else happened in this one? Oh, yeah, Homelander back home is is exerting control over Vought and the Seven. I didn't give Homelander enough credit for for having the brains to pull off something that was more than like, you know, two steps of of devious planning. This this was a little more complicated than that. What did you guys think? I mean, I guess I'm not totally surprised because he grew up like in this environment, like literally from lab, you know, lab time. Um, and, you know, like all he knows are the this whole the strategy the long-term strategy um, and he sees how people scheme and, and, you know, handle each other. And that's, that's all he had growing up. So I'm not surprised that he would be really intelligent in this space. He's a subject matter expert because he literally has been <laughs> immersed in that environment. Uh, speaking of Homelander, what do you guys think was Stan Edgar's ace in the hole with him? How he thought that he had something so over homelander that he could act with impunity against a guy who could laser him into mm -hmm. cubes without you know any time passing so did i miss something was it just this idea of kind of that father figure r respect element that was keeping edgar safe or was there something else I don't know. I was thinking about that this whole episode more so than usual because the way that Stan Ed Edgar just goes about it, like he's the only one does that does not flinch with Homelander. I was thinking like, what does he have on him? And it couldn't just be uh, Vicky. Like, I mean, he doesn't even know if she can blow his head up. So it was like, what do you have? Like, are you a soup? And we don't know. <laughs> I wonder if it's just him knowing that Homelander, like while he's the most powerful being, he has such daddy issues you know he has such like deep rooted issues that he can manipulate him in that way if he just stands his ground but i think it has to be more than that because i mean at some point homelander can just go crazy and like laser him so um <laughs> i wonder if he's just so confident that he's like oh no or if he knows that like there's a soldier boy out there or i don't know i wonder if he does have something else because i feel like you can't be running a, a this company full of superheroes without having something especially having homelander and that's why he's yeah, i don't know i just feel like there has to be something else but like in the moment like he could have just lasered him but he, i think it's more of the mind game though with stan edgar and then also him knowing that he still has secrets but my question is does homelander now if he's in charge of um you know vaught does he get access to those secrets as well or is like stan edgar just gonna go and you know to his lair of like the, the the ultimate secrets and maybe join Billy Butcher now or like I don't know you know because yeah. if he does know about Soldier Boy which I feel I have an inkling that he maybe was like a cover up or something he he knows that Russia had had him or something and maybe that's why they built Homelander to kind of be the equal because they knew that if Russia comes and get you know uses Soldier Boy against them these are just theories but that's sort of my thinking but long story short I think it's just the mind game more so with a hint of like maybe like he just thinks like if he does it well fuck but i think for the most part he's pretty confident that he won't do it because of all his issues I, I like the idea that he might be a soup the, the concept that he would have taken compound v some period of time ago and then exert the amount of control needed to never use or show at least the powers to anybody so that it would be a complete surprise if and when you ever needed to use them is a very stan edgar kind of plan i have nothing to go on with that though <laughs> except for yeah. getting you know him getting lasered and then the lasers just sort of like bouncing off would be a very cool visual <laughs> oh if homelander is going to get access now to the files because oh yeah Stanager, like there seems to be all this information that we don't know and i love that it you know obviously we shouldn't know everything because it, it makes it more exciting so there's all these hands that are dealt but like does homelander get is it like the white house like is there still like the president gets information to more than what we know but then there's still like area 51 where like he doesn't know everything <laughs> you know so like i don't know is is what's well, homelander's access going to be now yeah i mean i feel like he definitely would have access because i isn't the assumption here that under the the chain of hierarchy is stanley at the top and then next is ashley and we already know that ashley is a hundred percent in homelander's pocket 
So I think like he'll he's definitely equipped. Like Stanley really was the only thing in his way because he's got a puppet. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and then um, I mean, first of all, the org chart that has that has Homelander officially in the chain of command is very iffy to me <laughs> organizationally. But then th- later he produces Edgar's secret file on Victoria for Victoria later. And it goes back to the the comment that he has about Victoria, where he says she's more like me than I ever imagined. She, I always taught her to play all sides. So having a file that he could use against his own adopted daughter at some point makes sense. It reminded me of like Batman in the comics and like Nick Fury also from the Marvel comics, where both of those guys never fully trusted everybody that they had to work with. They had uh, secret places where they could where they could have the antidote to whomever they were fighting you know so in if batman ever needed to fight superman he had kryptonite things like that uber planning now that not that stan edgar stan edgar's exactly like those guys but it reminded me of that tactic with all of this newfound um ability to defy daddy homelander is acting even m- more bold in this episode, we have the, you know, the Victoria double cross of Stan Edgar. And how do you suppose that went down? The other thing is obviously killing supersonic, but the, um, we can come back to that in a second. How do you suppose that deal went down? Like, does it, do you suppose that my assumption is that Victoria didn't quite have the guts to go through with going on TV and saying that, that they were going to penalize Homelander as was the original plan. And so she went to Homelander and said, let's make a deal. So they did. D- is there something I missed there? Or do you guys have some other imagining uh, of how that went down? I was surprised by how deeply afraid she was a Homelander. I didn't get the vibe, you know, from meeting her last season up until this last episode that she had, like, she has like a big, big fear of him, which was surprising because she has a badass power and so yeah. that makes me really curious about like does she like try and it didn't work <laughs> or something or um or what but i think just based off of the strong portrayal of fear i i wouldn't be my in my head i pictured that homelander possibly like you know figured it out and went and threatened her in some kind of way so that's my that was my theory on it just based off of like the level of fear that she has well he has that super hearing that that kind of comes and goes as the plot needs it so there's there's that element we'll see we'll see soon hopefully in the next episode just to kind of ease the curiosity but i just he's been on top of all this stuff and he finds out all of this scheming and pieces in there so well, the reason i think she might have gone to him was just that that she wanted something too you know she wanted the compound v for her daughter which he delivered mm-hmm. um and so that what ma- that's what makes it feel like a kind of a quid pro quo moment um where i'll i'll clear the way for you at work <laughs> oh yeah you're absolutely right i totally forgot about that part i watched this episode yeah. like last weekend and oh, okay thinking that we were recording last monday because <laughs> i'm an idiot so- no that's what that was the intention but it didn't work out that way i was just too beat oh. <laughs> i wish i could remember that line obviously not calling you an idiot inez but that line with ashley and that kind of are you something something idiot <laughs> Oh yeah, is your idiot brain? Uh... Yeah. Oh <laughs> my idiot god, brain. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, speaking of that, right? Like, it's kind of interesting seeing Ashley's, like, you know, how she outputs her her fear, frustrations, and anxieties, and of being like such a small person within within her like regular role of the people like above her, right? Stan and uh, Homelander, and mm-hmm. seeing how she's yeah it got this like twisted thing going on do you think that is mutual was that mutual <laughs> between her and the at the end there uh i i do but I, I have questions about how i mean why does she have that strap on in her desk at work <laughs> does this come up a lot actually it's just <laughs> At first, I thought she was scared of Homelander, which she is always. Mm, yeah. But I think she is definitely in the same reign as, I mean, in the same vein of him. Like, you know, she's just a regular person. But the mentality that they have, like, they're so twisted because they kind of get off on the power 
Um, and so I think that's why they mesh well together. Um, although she knows like, it's not, it's obviously he's always going to be the domineering one. Cause he has, he can just kill her anytime, but she sort of relished her role now. I was like, this is what I'm going to be. But I feel like it was always there and she was able, she's able to do it. So like, it doesn't surprise me that she had to strap on whatever it is, like the American thing. Um, like a and, Homelander and branded like, strap her. on. Yeah. And I don't know what episode it was, but in the first, one of the first three Inez was talking about like how she kind of um, does this power thing. Um, and it seems to be more in the sexual part of it. Like she was, you know, the movie um, director, yeah, the movie director in the stall. And then like now this one, so she's channeling it through her sexual desires and like fan, like, you know, having that domineering thing over them, um, which I kind of like in some way. Cause like, yeah, I get it girl, you know, and she's kind of doing, I guess she would sort of be in, in other shows and series. We've had like the male role of like that, would do that and i kind of like that they put it in her role of like as a woman and doing it over the men you know <laughs> just sort of that representation of like well she can do it too <laughs> um you know i don't condone ashley and like what she she's obviously on homelander side and she's crazy but you know what like for equal representation of both crazy and both being able to domineer like i like that <laughs> yeah i'm glad you share that perspective because my mind is was like in a completely different space um have either one of you seen the show secession Succession, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Tom, the 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 married in guy, Tom, yeah, the, the husband, mm-hmm. the husband, yeah. 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 So, like season one, where he's like treating the the new the cousin who's like the new one in their hangout circle there, Greg, with, yeah. oh, Greg. Re- Greg, <laughs> yes. Sorry, I just started it, but like, um, so I'm still learning their names. Oh, it's very yes. good. <laughs> yeah. So. Yes, yes. That whole dynamic, when you see Tom like that, kind of like he's constantly being like belittled and demeaned or feeling demeaned and everything. So um, he takes all that frustration out on Greg. And I was kind of using that scenario for um, just for justifying what I see in Ashley's behavior. It's it's funny that you mentioned that. It does remind me that because it's also his behavior toward a, a Greg. Uh, I said egg because later on they call him Greg the egg a couple of times is so what would you call a cat? Like it, there's a bizarre like sexual bent to it, but, but yeah, they, they never yeah. engage in anything like that. They're both getting off of it. Cause it, it, it it's actually a really good comparison because to Ashley and um, her minions, because I think they both are sort of like Tom is the outlier. He has only married in, he doesn't really have any say. And then Greg is like trying to get in. He's a cousin. So he's not also in like the dominant, in the immediate power group. So they both are fighting for this like one spot to hoard you know to get in there and they're both i mean like the peasants you know and they're just sort of like trying to use each other but then one up each other but then they kind of love doing it together so it's sort of this weird energy and and you never know if they're going to backstab each other or they're going to you know they always sort of have that thing but ashley sort of does that although it also mirrors um now like a train and the deep because they're doing that thing too of trying to one up each other and get in the good graces of homelander good good comparison there (laughs) Well, A Train uh, condemns the Deep for kissing Homelander's ass, but then totally rats out Supersonic. I mean, I, I was just taking notes in that during that elevator scene when Supersonic's like, "Hey, A Train, I hear you don't like Homelander. We've got this little club that mm-hmm. you might want to." I, I knew that that was bad news. That A Train was instantly going to rat them out. Those two, especially, but A Train's consistently like fighting to stay relevant. So it makes sense that he he's not going to just like he's endured a lot of abuse from Homelander, but like he's still his super ambitious and trying to stay like in the public eye. That's why the the commercial was so clever, because it looked mm-hmm. like the sort of exact thing a train would do. This is important. You know, he didn't even know what the protest was about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's just really lost his way and it's sort of that thing like he can do nothing else and then what do you what does a soup do that has doesn't have powers has lost his uh one thing that he knows he can do well like he may not be super smart he may not be anything else but you take away the one thing that he like loved and informed him as a person like he used his speed as like his ego booster like he was had that like you know that um charisma because he knew like well f you guys i can go speed away you know like and now he can't use any of that so he's just lost and um it does make sense that he would rat him out because like he also needs homelander they all need homelander in some way 
if they want to keep the power and feel relevant because without it, they're just going to go home and be Joe Schmo soup, you know, saving, you know, cat kittens or something. And they can't do that once they've experienced the level of, you know, being at Vought and being the soups. So. Well, it keeps them fractured so that, yeah, so that the little club that may have a chance of, of harming or killing Homelander eventually, as long as they're fractured, they'll never know. You know, because because they'll never go just one at a time after him, which is all they can think of because mm-hmm. they won't join up. They won't be a team. OK, so let's flip back to that supersonic moment. It made me wonder if Homelander had had taken such personnel <laughs> issues into his own hands before lasering up other teammates that didn't quite fit. I did not see this coming, though, right in this episode. I knew there was bad news for Supersonic, but I didn't see it coming that he would be dead in this same episode. What about you guys? Yeah, it, they did surprise me with how quickly they did that. I suspected by the end of the season, I would definitely see him die probably in the finale. That's usually the kind of formula that we get. I'm not surprised by how brutal it was, though. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And then it made sense, though, because we never really knew what he did. I guess you can kind of go off the the name. And I was like, it's weird that they haven't showed us anything. And then I was like, oh, he was so irrelevant that they didn't even need to get to that part. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so he was sort of just there to kind of show Starlight, like, this is what's going to happen if you kind of cross me. So it was sad because I was, you know, excited that he was there. But yeah, I didn't think it was going to be this soon. Again, I just love that they're su- surprising us because... I mean, we're in the third season, so things can sort of get repetitive. And so I like that it still uh, feels fresh because I was kind of worried, you know, like third season, is it going to start feeling the same? All this satirical thing is going to get a little bit, um, we're going to start like, okay, they're doing this again, but it's still like surprising what they're doing. So I was like, yay. So I think that was a good play instead of letting it drag out. And then, um, and then we're like, okay, we knew that was going to happen. Like they did it when we weren't expecting it. So I liked it. One thing to keep in mind with the way that they dropped this is that with three going in the first day, uh, in the second week, we're in the fourth episode, but we're also halfway through. <laughs> so it's kind of weird to think of it that way. Oh, yeah. So it's like mid-season finale. I mean, yeah. Mid-season yeah. like moment, I guess you'd like plot point. Yeah, yeah. The next one is called The Last Time to Look on This World of Lies. And then after that comes Herogasm, which is apparently some sort of wild extravaganza. Of yeah, things. I read some articles about that, about like people leaving filming that with PTSD type of experience. So oh, man. I'm so curious when we get to episode six. Wow. Yeah, I was eating breakfast and I was like, I am going to pause, finish my breakfast and then continue watching. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Never know what you'll see in this, yeah. in this show. <laughs> Don't eat while you watch the show. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we watched it very late last night because we went to uh, a baseball game and so we got home late and I needed to do this. So I watched it super late last night, but I don't usually watch it with Caroline and she can't really mix going to bed and violent imagery <laughs> at the same time. So I was a little <laughs> worried, you know, the, about what she'd see. But uh, fortunately, although some bad stuff happened in this one, it wasn't since it was mostly with like dildos going through people's faces, it wasn't so terrible because there was that weird comedic expert or aspect of like a dildo in your eye or whatever. And so it was not so bad. Like that's not going to happen in real life. (laughs) (laughs) That leaves us really with Starlight. We can talk about Maeve just for a sec, but in relation to the whole plan, but Starlight is basically still out there on a limb. Huey is with the boys. Maeve is very much keeping to herself, even though they are they want the same thing. Maeve is going to do her own thing her own way, probably. It may end up helping them later, but she doesn't sound like she's going to be very communicative up till that point. Kind of like she was last season when they needed to take down Stormfront. I do like that she's got her own little, <clears throat> like, long-term game that she's doing, manipulating the, the world's perspective and her colleague's perspective of what her life is like. That's oh, That was pretty cool. Yeah, a little more than we gave her credit for, you know, keeping up her training. And, and she's realistic. I think she's imagining that maybe she might be able to wrestle Homelander in place just for a second long enough for... Or they, whoever they are, to do whatever they're going to do to Homelander so that he isn't, so that he's still in the shot, you know, whenever they take their shot with whatever this weapon is, maybe she can get him into that spot before she dies. 
And that's that's all she's hoping for this. But yeah, Starlight, uh, with she and Huey have a have a scene with uh, before Homelander breaks in the, the whatever it takes. We've been asking ourselves how far does that does that mean she'll have to go? And the stakes for her in in this one were raised obviously with with the supersonic situation because now she knows like Homelander is he's off the leash at this point he is unchained with how far he will take whatever it is he wants to do so if i was the person having to pose as his public girlfriend i think i'd be getting much more nervous than i was a minute ago fuck yeah (laughs) with (laughs) homelander he's scary he's a scary motherfucker this character (laughs) so then now he knows like that she was part of this plan right so i'm am super nervous for her future in the next upcoming episodes because he is unhinged he has no more checks and balances and you know he's got the government under his thumb he's got um vought under his thumb now so and the public well a part of the public yeah yeah honestly i was more in need with huey because he sort of made that comment to starlight about you agreed to this like is if as if she had a choice in this episode it really is solidified that i think huey and starlight are not going down a good path because he's just so set on his hero complex of oh i'm just useless i can't do anything starlight always has to save me and then of course his choice to take beads down the road it made sense i was like of course he's going to do that and so i don't know that's not going to be good but yeah starlight is sort of in a very tricky position but luckily she can kind of rest assured at least for now that homelander needs her in some way for the public perception although if he's going towards a very specific demographic (laughs) he might not need her down the road if like he gets all the people like millions of people to follow him and like he won't need to continue this facade of being with starlight she's safe for now but i don't think that's like i think it's ticking she's useful right now and she's plotted against him what twice now so like he if he can the moment he can get rid of her he will (laughs) Yeah, well, I, I'm thinking that she's part of some other plan that isn't completely unveiled yet. And that's fed by this episode where it showed that he can he can carry out longer term, bigger deal plans than I had given him credit for. So the way that he brought her in as his girlfriend uh, without her knowing, you know, suddenly keeping her around, even though he knows she's plotting against him. It just it, I think it's bigger than just trying to show her who's boss or you know some something like that i think there's something else that's going to going to happen whether whether she becomes like maybe a human shield because he knows that that there are other forces plotting against him he's overheard it i don't know the the mantra of whatever it takes keeps coming back and you saying that that they're going down a bad path makes me also think that okay so maybe they'll they'll both end up having to do things that in their own eyes sort of or each other's eyes dirty themselves in in a way where they can't be each other's person anymore, you know, because they did whatever it takes, but it was more than they're willing to actually live with. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's a very exhausting existence. Well, then let's uh, flip over to Russia, where the boys wound up after making an arrangement with little Nina in her Russian gang. Was I still understanding that even though Butcher had the means to pay off Cherie's um, uh, debt that she still definitely wanted to kill the the girl from from uh, Frenchie's past. I think she said it was not about the money. It was the principle. That's very mob boss kind of thinking. Yeah. <laughs> what is it with the butcher and the V, the temp V, and keeping it for himself? Is it really that sort of mm, what he was trying to tell Huey in terms of the that he's okay taking it because he's he considers himself a piece of shit. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's not really for others because he wouldn't want other people to have to demean themselves by allowing themselves to have superpowers. Is, is there more to it than that? I was thinking that it was more like a I like having the power, so I want to I want to be the one with the power. I didn't mm. think it was that, but that is a good theory. 
because <clears throat> he is very cocky and he always kind of it reminds everybody that he's he knows best and he's gonna do what he wants to do i kind of fa- thought it was doing like a parallel to like older brother taking drugs and younger brother wanting to be like older brother you know they made a big point about making them have that kind of relationship in season two i was kind of assuming that butcher's attempts to get huey to not participate in that was kind of just that kind of dynamic because he knows how much it physically hurts his body because he's gone through the transition of in having having trouble controlling it during and then the withdrawal we saw was really horrible um so i think that he's just just genuinely trying to keep him away from that is how i interpreted it yeah, and Billy just has a horrible way of showing it. Like, I think he's one of those people that feels deeply, but he doesn't know how to show it. Like, I know he cares about Kimiko and Frenchie and all of them, but he does he does these things in a way that, like, it doesn't make them feel like he cares about them. And that's a dangerous sort of uh, place to be because the people who are with you and your team should be the one, you know, like, to have their back, or at least you make them feel like if you're the leader, you have their back. But he also talked to MM and was like, like, kind of get that spiel about, like, you're the leader. And so I was also wondering if this was, like, a self-sacrifice thing. Like, he knows it's not going to go down a road of, like, he's taking this V and he's going to defeat Homelander and all this stuff. Like, I feel like he's doing it also to self-sacrifice and probably because he doesn't have Becca anymore. He just wants to get rid of the soups, leave the world in a good place, and he probably thinks he's going to die in the process and so i think he's also setting this up to like hey like you're the leader and real person and you're going to take care of this team and but also i wish he would have told them and i think they would have understood they would have probably told him not to do it and maybe he also didn't want to hear the negative part of it like he just wanted to hear uh he didn't want to hear any opposing views to doing it because like he was going to do it anyway and then have that conflict as well between everybody so it was sort of that thing like I know I need to do this because there's no other way. So instead of having people tell me it's not good because he knows it's already not good because he hates soups more than anything, he was like, I'm just going to do this and take one for the team. Yeah. I, and then Huey is just thinking so one dimensional, like on the surface level of like he mentally cannot handle the V. Like you see him in the van, like when they're taking Kimiko and he's just get, like so high off he of the power. He looks totally high. Yeah. And I think, yeah. And I think Billy also understands understood that like he billy can handle the v in the sense of he is doing it for the purpose of just being toe to toe or at least having a chance to to deal with the soups but i think he also knew deep down like huey is just such a vulnerable place like regardless of the physical um side effects or whatever i think mentally he cannot handle it because he's just so like feels useless that the v is definitely going to make him feel like it just did you know and that's the dangerous slope he probably doesn't want to he didn't want him to go on but he doesn't say much with his words he just says don't do it and it's like of course a kid that you say don't do something they're gonna do it (laughs) so it's like i would like i wish he just had better communication with all his team members because i know deep down he really cares about them but they're just not feeling the love because he's a man of very few harsh words (laughs) (laughs) right one or two are the most popular actually but and then and then like 20 percent for the rest of the words Speaking of Butcher, when he had his uh, his powers, I, I read an article recently. I think I sent it into our little chat group, <clears throat> but uh, it was it was the contemplation about whether um, Butcher's eyes, his lasers, could potentially be stronger than Homelander's, and I thought that was like a really fun like thing to think about um, because. The article covers like that different temperatures of lasers, you know, are different colors and homelanders are red and we see twice butcher. So I was wondering about if the V powers come in consistently each time you take it or does it change each time that you don't know what power you're going to get. So now we've seen twice the butcher has these like lasers that are like an orangish like yellow color for some lenders red and the article was talking about how the yellow one is like a stronger one and they were comparing um the cauterized bodies that Ryan and Homelander's like victims tend to have versus like when Butcher uses his laser eyes on something, the flesh is like explosive and like everywhere. So anyway, I just want to throw that out there for you guys. That that was really fun. Like oh, I'm sure it's training. intentional. I'm sure that's intentional. Yeah. It, and it kind of reminded me of like the color of um 
uh, soldier boy's laser, you know, when it, that came out of his chest, like it was, a, I felt like it was like a similar yellow laser color. So anyway, just a theory. It's a good one. Uh, but would Butcher be in position to find out? Possibly. One of his vials got used up on Huey <laughs> this episode. That's That might come into play later. Interesting that Butcher would get the Homelander set of powers, and Huey does not get, as far as we know, offensive powers. Yes, he gets some strength, but he, he gets the teleportation, which is useful, but not really like a frontline power you know uh we, if you've seen x2 you've seen nightcrawler goes to the white yeah. house and that's a pretty cool scene but he's also a gymnast and and is able to um to make the most of his fighting ability whereas huey's never shown any aptitude toward actual <laughs> fighting <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah i wonder if it would be something down the road since we saw vicky put the v like the permanent v which is blue i guess with her daughter i wonder if like then Huey all high and souped up, he's going to be like, oh, if I'm like this all the time, I can protect Starlight and we can be together. And you I wonder know, if he's going to make a horrible choice, go down that road, get the V. And then, and then that could be the thing that takes Starlight and him, like the last line of like, wh how could you do that? <laughs> that could, yeah. Well, whatever it takes, right. Whatever it takes it. Given the way that these episodes are going, um, e even if I didn't know that it was a very popular show, I would still not guess that it's ending now, you know, at the end of this season. It seems more like a transitional, like they may reach a super low point at the end of this season and need to scrape back up to some semblance of, of okayness next season. Just a guess. Either of you thought about, like, if, if getting a soup power is based off of something about, like, your personality, if, if that's kind of the connection we're making between, like, Butchers versus Huey's kind of powers. Yeah. Yeah. Have you thought about what powers you would be? <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I have always wanted powers. <laughs> what, any kind of powers yeah. or a specific kind of powers? The Superman set of powers has always been my my favorite because, you know, who wouldn't want those powers? The That's strength, a great set of powers, yeah, for the, sure. The, the flight. The lasers, guy could, you know, take or leave, actually. The second place has always been similar to Huey's, though. Not teleportation, but the invisibility. But, you know, I'm an introvert, mm -hmm. so that's, uh, <laughs> I do my best yeah. to exercise whatever I can of that power in the real world already. <laughs> Just because I, I'm always so curious, but I don't like ask people directly things. I think maybe uh, mind reading, but I don't know if that would be exhausting because I've seen that power in some instances where it's not fun, but I would just love to know what people are thinking. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. in certain instances um and maybe control a little bit but then um uh, i think Rex, i like huh? the invis yeah and then i think like the um invisibility as well would be cool because I, I i i guess it's that sort of like fly on the wall i just imagine like in those really like interesting conversations i was like i just want to like hear what you know people talk about or whatever so i think it'd be that sort of thing Right. I don't I like want them it. to talk to me. I just want to hear what they're saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't want to be involved. I just like I'm just a very curious cat, you know. So I'm just like, ah. Oh. Um, and then like, I don't think it would go in my personality because I hate flying. But I would just love to be like, I would love to fly and not be scared. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. And, you know, a level of invisibility is is also something for me. And it's not so not so much for eavesdropping. It's just more for like nobody bug me. <laughs> like I like <laughs> Where's so that is? I don't know. Well, <laughs> so I always like have my sunglasses that, on that sometimes <laughs> even indoors <laughs> just because it's like my sunglasses on. You're not going to come talk to me. <laughs> I would probably want like a Professor X type of deal. I think that I'm watching Stranger Things um, right now. I'm starting from the very beginning before I start the new season. Mm. And uh, I'm just real, you know, thinking about how amazing Professor X is because I'm watching Eleven do like all Professor X like <laughs> level of ass, of ass kicking. <laughs> so, so that's what I would like. But that's mostly because like I like to do things as efficiently as possible with as little work to exert. So if I have like telekinesis power where i don't have to like get up and go grab something like that's cool i like that <laughs> like, I it to me. oh yeah that uh, sounds real nice actually but you don't gain the weight for... from not doing anything <laughs> yeah use her superpowers not necessarily for good but 
for uh, laziness. <laughs> it's just for life. <laughs> it's just for living my yeah. best life on earth. So like, hey, like who, nobody said because I have these superpowers that I have to be like an active, like on active duty as a soup. It's not a condition. <laughs> Is it? Is it a condition? <laughs> right. Right. You're going to, now that you take the V, you have to go on patrol. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that. know about that part. Well, if I'm like telekinetic, that, then I can possibly like fly and float, and that's not bad. <laughs> that's true. That's true. There's there's some uh, theory out there in the in the land of people that care about superheroes, whether or not forms of flight or or say super strength or whatever are actually all just interpretations of telekinesis. You know, just lifting yeah. your body or or exerting strength through your, or that looks like your arm is doing it, but it's actually your telekinesis, et cetera, et cetera. I do like mind control too, just to make sure that my environments are comfortable. <laughs> it's like, oh, nice. like yeah. you're being, you know, like, oh, you think you're going to come talk to me? You're not going to talk to me. And then they just right. like pivot and I didn't this have to do anything. This is not the Inez you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry, we digress. And thank you for sharing your superpowers with me. Let's talking about Huey. The, the moment when the team kind of shits on him for taking the temp V caught me off guard as well as Huey, but it helped put me into the mind space of the team and the complete distaste that they have for powers that, that, you know, like they're willing, they're not totally surprised and they're very willing to see that Butcher has taken it because that's expected that he would lower himself he would sully himself by having powers but huey they they expected better from if is is like the only way i can think of it and powers are beneath him according to the kind of the ethos of their group so initially it surprised me i don't know that that it was completely fair exactly because he's got a lot of skin in the game too what did you guys think of the moment when they're like you're better than this, Huey. I think that helped put us in back into perspective because I think when we watch this, I, you can forget sometimes just because the characters are super cool and stuff like what they're actually fighting for and like, and you don't like we forget or at least I forget sometimes like I know Billy's fighting Homelander, but then I forget no he's fighting like all soups, like he doesn't like the idea of the soups and stuff in general. And then obviously MM with Soldier Boy and his family and like so they and then even Kimiko like like how like she if she had chose been able to choose she wouldn't have gotten power. She hates her powers. Yeah, I think it was a good kind of like check, like you said, into the into the space of like they all collectively don't like soups and then they can't believe Huey. I think they see Huey as this like the, the, the best, the, the best of all of them, even though he makes really questionable choices. And so maybe they're like, I can't believe you would do it. Like, why are we doing this? I felt like also like, don't you know what we're doing? Like, like why, why we're doing this for and what you're doing it for? Like, so I felt like also just felt like a slap in the face to them in a way of like, why would you do that sort of thing? Like Billy has a reason, but you don't really have a reason that big of a reason yet. So I don't know. I feel like that's why they were disappointed. Well, he's got starlight though, and he mm -hmm. can't do anything as yeah. at least he doesn't think he can. But it's such an immature response to that. Like I get he's been in really bad situations, but I think for them, especially like him being around Kimiko who has, I mean, said, you know, like, I hate this. Like, why would, you know, and, and I feel like it was a slap in the face to her. Like, why would you do that willingly? And it kind of like, you should know better than most people why you shouldn't use this. I think it just kind of like the same parallel. Just this is the same kind of way that like families feel when this happens with people start taking drugs in their family. So I guess like my head space just kind of goes into that to them. It's so, it's so bad. I feel like it, I felt like it was more of a, like, why would you like do this to your body kind of thing than like, I really hate soup so much and you're trying to be a soup. Like I didn't get like, it was that kind of vibe. I, I think it's just the fact that it is a drug and it's uncontrolled drug and it's a dangerous drug. And, butcher basically like empowered um empowered huey to be able to do it you know like by keeping it a secret and keeping it like with him and like participating in it and and so i i felt like it was that kind of storytelling i doubt this is the last time huey's gonna take the temp v though i don't know that it's ever going to work out in his favor totally but i i think he's i think he liked it i yeah. think he liked it 
Yeah, that's definitely, Mm -hmm. he looks like he got a big old dump of dopamine. So, (laughs) Uh, We've talked about uh, MM and his story. I think we're just seeing that his hate for Soldier Boy continues to grow. I mean, the, the episode started with him reviewing that that weird solid gold appearance of soldier boy quote unquote singing (laughs) that weird song and him watching it you guys are too young to know that solid gold was a real show in the late 70s and early 80s it was just like uh they played music and and people danced and that was the show (laughs) and yeah there were appearances by bands or whatever and that was it that's funny. I figured it was like, cause everything seems to be based on something that's real. So I was like, oh, that seems like it was, it would be realistic. So like not even band, based. Band. It is. It was the exact thing. Exact same thing. Oh <laughs> yes. my God. That's so funny. Yeah. I love that. We had much lower standards for entertainment back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> the, in terms of, uh, kind of predicting uh, plot wise elements based on dialogue when Frenchie said that they were going to leave just after this job, that was not great news for him and Kimiko Mm -hmm. for uh, attentive TV watchers. Like we were saying in the last episode, there was that sort of, I got three days left to retirement sort of feeling that they were both having. And, (laughs) and that just kind of sealed it, which leads us into Kimiko's uh, story. Um, She has the, argument about not being a gun but being sent to the oligarchs prostitute festival i mean that that gave us sort of that boise action scene that she has actually given us a few times remember last season she went and ripped some dude's face off um so she's often given us that boys flavored mega violence that that helps kind of sustain the flavor of the show yeah, her um, name this episode for me is Dildo Assassin. Dildo Assassin. <laughs> yeah, there was a pretty like um, adventurous scene, adventurous fight scene that they gave her, paralleled with Frenchie's ominous statement: <laughs> "This one last job." Yeah, right. It never works out this way. And then now that she's down and she's not healing, when I think she goes in fearless because she knows that she lives through all of them, and I can see it now. I can. I can see the possibility who might lose her. If you recall, Stormfront took out her brother last season. He was acting like he could come back from most things, and that didn't quite work out for him. It's like when supers run into super level power, that's when it gets dicey for them. Like mundane things like bullets, not so bad, but super plasma, super lasers, whatever, that's that's where the real danger is for them. Incidentally, if you look on the IMDb write-up for this episode, they refer to hashtag Clash of the Dildos. So be sure to add that to uh, uh, <laughs> yes. to our posting to make sure we get the most hits. <laughs> I mean, they did want to have us have a dildo feel because, you know, we saw the Ashley <laughs> with their strap on. I mean, they sprinkled it around. It's a dildo episode. It very much was yes for sure the oligarch scene happens uh she's she continues to kind of add this sort of texture to her flavor to her character with even though she's been shot by the by the by the woman she she does not want to be uh feared by them and doesn't really know how to can't use her words so she doesn't really know how to deal with that and that's very frustrating for her but we don't get we may not get much more of her character given how things go down in the secret Russian lab when she saves Frenchie, you know, the classic pushing Frenchie out of the way from the plasma blast. I don't know. We put her on the chopping block last week. She takes a very heavy supercharge to the entire body. They can't seem to get her pulse or anything in the, in the van racing away. I think she's dead. What about you guys? I hope not. She, you know, yeah, I hope that she's not just because she's the only like woman on that team. Like she has like really great depth to her um, character and I would love to see more of it. Just they've been setting us up for, you know, loving her a little bit more given, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of the rough start that she had with the team coming along, Mm -hmm. um, becoming communicative, being able to tell us what she was thinking and how she was feeling and how much she wanted to be out. And then this happens they might twist it and make it like Frenchie. They do that kind of stuff too. Like 
it's like sharp left sharp right turns <laughs> from where you think you're headed if they kill her off that would be that would be a bummer but it would also add to the stakes of the show like oh they're not safe and there hasn't been a main one that has died recently so but i don't i wouldn't want it to be her so i don't know but what if they also have to use more v on her or something and Ooh. they've used that as like a life-sustaining thing in the past it's dicey right but they've done yeah. it yeah yeah, so if there's one vial left that Billy has, what if they inject her with that? And um, what if it has like an opposite effect too? I don't know if you're already souped up and you take more V, like what happens? So I don't know, but I feel like they can't. She can't die. I think it's more of like the stakes sort of thing. Maybe just making it making it a little bit more real for everybody. So beat her up, take her out of commission, let everybody know the stakes are there, but don't kill her. It seems to be a big deal uh, this season of people taking these drugs like V, permanent V. So I just feel like that's the the connective thread throughout this whole season of that choice people are making. Uh, doing it to save people, doing it for their own reasons or, you know, um, other things. But hopefully she won't die. But if she does, that'll be good for the show. <laughs> <laughs> not not for the audience not for the audience though but for like you know keeping us on our toes it'd be like game of thrones style you know yeah yeah exactly yeah as we close up the show this week let's go into possible predictions cat you did a great job last time predicting uh, soldier boy's appearance rather than some super weapon do you have anything else in store for us what's your the boy's fortune cookie say for next week learning more about Sir soldier boy i hope they give sort of like a background of where of how he got there to be in in with the russians and i wonder if it's sort of that thing like if you click reset you know like on soups or something like he's been away all he he doesn't know what time he's in or anything or maybe he does i don't know he was alive with the mask on but um i wonder if it's also something where he's just automatically going to go back to bot and so i wonder if they're going to do that right away in the next episode where soldier boy goes to bot and then it's like oh here's homelander so that's my prediction of hopefully having them at least know they're in the same universe now <laughs> like when superman woke up in justice league yes. and he's sort of like pissed off <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Like a beacon or something. I wonder if like he's going towards a beacon of some sort. Hmm, I think probably besides the obvious ones we've already covered from the characters, I think I would like to see more of the dynamic between the deep and his wife. Because I thought it was really weird that she just gets to sit in like their team meeting. <laughs> Like be able to like text him and influence like in the room when they're like working and having like a work meeting. Like why why is she there? Like what who is she? What is her purpose? What's happening? Yeah, well, and she's pulling the deep strings. The deep has the seat at the table, but she's telling him what to say, even though it's wildly out of character for him and his <laughs> ability to to work through problems. It catches Homelander off guard. Um, that's uh, yeah. I think we'll continue to see. Little Bits of the Deep and A-Train, the two stories that I care the least about. I like Kat's idea about home, or a Soldier Boy coming home and possibly setting up a conflict that we might be able to see what Homelander's reaction is to having Soldier Boy come back because the timeline of Homelander's um, conception and Soldier Boy's... Um, popularity and before he disappears that might not overlap in a way where they had any kind of meaningful meeting ever you know it might have been homelander was still in the lab or in a test tube or whatever when when soldier boy disappeared that's true yeah and also i think it would change the dynamic of if the team knows that there's another homelander they don't necessarily have to follow homelander um that could be interesting as well if they if they show that in this next episode that would bring about one of those interesting uh the devil you know kind of things right where mm. maybe soldier boy can take down homelander but is he better <laughs> you know is he worth ally allying yourself with or is he potentially worse I mean, we saw that he wasn't actually a great guy in that flashback but not quite as terrible as homelander but we only had the one clip and we don't know we know that he cannot really sing sort of scats i guess <laughs> i i think that you guys' uh predictions are probably where we're gonna go i, I think we'll see kimiko's um outcome whatever that's gonna be whether it's some kind of leveling off 
uh, at, at, a, at a very low functioning state for a while, or if she just dies. I think we'll see that. Like I said earlier, I think she's dead. Maybe it's just because I want the stakes of the show to remain high and, and emotionally raw so that whenever you watch it, you don't know what's going to happen. Sort of like you had, like, like we've mentioned, Cad in the early days of Game of Thrones. You don't know who's going to stay around on screen. Mm -hmm. and, and we haven't had that element on this show. I mean, supersonic dying doesn't quite scratch that itch um, because he was so new anyway. And we didn't really have any, any, we didn't even know what his power was. We assume it was sound based, but that's about it. If people want to find you, Kat, where would they look on the social networks? Yes, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at things cat loves cat with a C. Things cat loves. So even if I put things cat likes on the post, do not go there. That is not someone we support or know. <laughs> yeah, it goes. It goes very uh, left field if, it, if it's likes. Right, <laughs> That's it's, not me, guys. Well, it, now it, I'm. Now I have to go look at it. Things cat loves is our cat. And what about you, Inez? Swim it around in Twitter at Neezy Thinks, um, or you can find me in some of the Facebook groups related to the show. I love reading all the comments and articles that are posted there, and we'd like to bring some of those into these conversations. And as usual, I am Paul V. Daly on Twitter or Pod Clubhouse on Twitter or Instagram or www.podclubhouse.com on the net. If you like this podcast, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to it on iTunes or Amazon or wherever you listen to podcasts so that other people can find it and listen to our, our wise predictions. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you for listening. This has been an original Pod Clubhouse production. Pod Clubhouse is a podcast network dedicated to encouraging collaboration among podcasters and friends to bring a fresh voice and diverse perspective on a wide array of content. Please visit and leave a comment for us at podclubhouse.com. Rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast feeds on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can find us at Pod Clubhouse. Our DMs are always open, and we'd love to hear from you. Pod Clubhouse.